All right, so now we're on lesson 11 and we're going to continue to build on all of the previous exercises. So in the previous training videos, we covered collections, right? So lists, and then we talked about dictionaries and hash tables. And so essentially the next crucial component is that once you've got a collection of objects or strings or numbers, you basically need to iterate through those using loops or iterators. And so uh, you can, you know, if you're trying to process a group of selected objects, say for instance, in the Tecla model, like you have a group of selected parts, or if you wanna get all of the beams in the database, then you need to iterate through each of those in a loop. So that way you can process them, whether you're doing like a file export of data, or if you're trying to update a user defined attribute on all those objects, essentially, once you get a collection or a list of those objects, you have to iterate through those or loop through them to go ahead and do something or get data out of them. That's what we're gonna cover here. What I want you to do is create a new Windows application, a WinForms application, create three buttons here and title them for loop, for each loop, and while loop, and then create a text box uh, associated to the right of each of those. And that's where we're gonna write the results of getting information through those for loops, um, the for each loop and the while loop. Now there are different reasons. These are the three main uh, basically loop or iterations that we're gonna use here. Um, there is one other special one in Tecla, but I will again showcase that uh, specifically in the Tecla training videos uh, because uh, most people don't implement that anymore. It's again because Tecla, wa the original API was written a long time ago. And so there's some old uh, .NET Framework 1.1 type of uh, iterations and loops in there. Um, but here, these are the most common ones that you're gonna see in C-sharp today, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so very similar to the previous exercises, we're just gonna double click on the header of the form, which will create a form load event. And we're going to create um, a class level, uh, basically collection here. We're gonna keep it very simple. We're gonna do a list of strings uh, very similar to what we did before and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say profiles and uh, we'll declare that here as a class level variable then inside of the form load we'll actually instantiate that profiles list so we'll just say new list of strings and then there we go we've got our starting point now let's go ahead and begin with the for loop now the for loop is uh, kind of, again, very old school. It's very, uh, we use this when there's an index number that we're trying to iterate through. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the for loop button and it will create that code block and event handler for us. Now, uh, before I actually do that, again, I forgot to add uh, some values here to profile. So let's just say add, and we'll just say W12 by 14. And then we'll just add a few different ones here, profiles.add W21 by 44 and profiles.add w16 by 36. Okay, so we've got a few different profiles added to this list or this collection. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to do a for loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a string and I'm just gonna say results string and it's going to be basically empty. So I'm starting out with nothing. So you're gonna see me repeat a lot of the things that I've done in the previous exercises. So it's always good to sort of build from the start point and I design the training. So that way you sort of repractice things that you've learned and we do it in a very specific order. So we're gonna use some of those string parsing kind of uh, you know lessons that we learned earlier. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and do a for loop. So the keyword here is for, and then basically there is a parentheses that you enter in here and we're gonna come back to that. And I'm just gonna do the open and close curly brackets because essentially whenever you do a loop, there's the, uh, the keyword of what type of loop it, it is, then there's the condition or the formulas that go in here. And then there's essentially the code block of uh, executing each iteration of that loop. So I'm gonna explain that in a second. So um, again, th this is, uh, you know, for us old school programmers, this is kind of how you did things when everything in collections was index based and that's how you looked stuff up and uh, retrieve things. Um, nowadays, you know, with for each loop, it's a lot simpler, but I'm just gonna showcase this. There are use cases where you do um, need to use an index number to kind of get to certain things. Um, you know, you'll kind of feel it out as you go where it makes more sense to use uh, a for loop with an index number uh, versus a for each. 
Um, usually it's because you're trying to use an index number to look up data and information from two different uh, sort of collections um, instead of just one. Um, so that's one reason, but I'm just gonna show you the syntax here and you can kind of see how it works. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to type in the word int and I'm gonna just use the letter lowercase i. You'll see this as an implementation. It can be anything. It does not have to be uh, uh, you know, lowercase i as the variable name. It can be whatever you want. You could call it counter. It can be anything you want. Um, this is just a common implementation because it's very simple and you'll see this across a lot of programming language examples. So that's why I'm putting this here. I'm gonna say while uh, for int i equals zero. So just think of int as like basically it's a it's a counter number. It's like basically a starting point in the for loop. So then I'm just going to put a semicolon here. Then I'm going to say um, I uh, basically the, uh, is less than the uh, number of profiles in the list. So count. So there's a count property that returns the number of items in that profiles list. And then we do another semicolon and we say I plus plus. Wow, this is, uh, you know, if you're not used to programming, wow, this looks really irritating uh, and very complicated. So let me explain what's happening here. I'm declaring a counter number, which is i, and it's an int data type. So I have to declare this counter variable, um, and I'm doing it all here within this statement. And I'm basically saying that I want to start at an index of zero, so the first item in the list. And then this is the conditional statement where the for loop is going to keep on going as long as the i variable is less than this uh, profiles list count. So as long as it's less than the uh, number of items in the list, then I'm going to continue to i++, which basically means increment the counter number um, over and over as each loop goes through. Again, this is very uh, just not human readable friendly. But it is uh, it does have a purpose, especially if you are, uh, again, getting data from two different lists using an index number or if you actually intentionally want to go backwards, uh, like starting at the end of a list and go backwards to front. That's one way without resorting a collection. Um, another one is if you're doing odds and evens and you're trying to actually get um, just every odd or even number in a collection or you're starting at a specific index or starting point, this is where for loops really make a lot of sense. Even though the syntax is a bit more complicated, there is a purpose for these. So the for loop is basically, again, the syntax is I'm declaring a counter number and a starting point. Then I'm basically creating a conditional rule that says as long as I, for instance, is less than the uh, count or the number of objects in the in the collection. And then uh, basically as each loop goes by, I'm going to increment the counter number plus plus is basically like saying um, the counter number plus one. That's what the plus plus is, is it's just a short number for incrementing the counter number by one. All right. So. How do I actually use this in practice? When I go inside of the code, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say profiles, and then I use the square brackets and I put the I uh, index or counter number in there, and that basically will get the specific uh, string at that specific counter number. So if the first iteration of the for loop, it's gonna get the first index. As it goes through the second one, it's gonna increment the I to one, then two, then three, then four, as long as that I or that index number is less than the total count of objects in the list. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and do some magic here where the result string is going to be plus equals. Okay, and we're gonna do that string dot format very similar to what we did before. And so the string is gonna just add a space bar after each one of these loops. And then we'll just put a closing parentheses there so everything looks good. All right, so essentially as it goes through each iteration of the for loop, it's going to continue to append um, basically the profile and the profiles list to the result string. Then we are going to, at the end, we're gonna to go to label, um, and it looks like I forgot to add a label. Nope, I'm sorry, I did not do labels, I did text boxes here. So text, and then for the for loop dot text, we're gonna say equals result string. There we go. So if you need to, pause this, take a look at this. I know that the syntax seems a little bit strange, but again, this is the counter number starting point. This is the conditional statement that this for loop will continue to run as long as the counter is less than a certain number. 
And then here we're going to, as each pass happens, we're going to increment the counter by one. You could, again, if you're trying to do evens or odds, you could say uh, I equals plus two each time the for loop runs and you'll only get evens, right? So this is where if you need very specific type of control based on an index or a counter number, the for loop is super handy. All right, so let's run this code and let's see if this works. So we're gonna say for loop and then there we have W12 by 14, 21 by 44 and 16 by 36 and they're all delimited by a space. So the counter worked. Now, let's actually show you a really cool feature here when you're debugging here in Visual Studio. Now, let's say that I want the code to break or stop every time I go through something just to see that everything is working. So if I actually click on this left uh, column here, you'll see that I'm actually creating a breakpoint in the code where it'll pause or stop as it's going through the code. So here I'm gonna press the for loop and notice that it stops at the result string. And so by default, when it first goes through this, um, here I'm just seeing that the profiles count is three, the current index is zero, and so now the result string is empty. Now watch this, if I continue on here at the top, result string now equals W12 by 14 because it found that first string. Um, again, the I is now incremented to one, so I'll just keep going, so that's the second item in the list. As I keep continuing on, you'll see that the result string continues to build up as it goes through each one. So now the index number is two, the profiles count is three, so we have one more item to go through, and then once it's done, it will continue through that loop, and we have all three of those values added here to that text box. Now when you're done debugging, you can always click on this, and then it will no longer have that breakpoint in the code. All right, let's take a look at the for each loop. A much easier to work with, so we'll go back to the form. We'll double click on the for each button and it'll create that code block or that event handler for the for each loop. Now, again, we're gonna do very similar things. We're gonna have this result string, so I'm just gonna actually copy the code um, and cheat a little bit here just to save some time. And we'll just say that uh, instead of the for loop text, we're gonna do the text underscore for each loop dot text field on the UI and we'll pass the result string to that. And then in between that, we're going to do the for each. So on a for each, instead of the word for, you type in the word for each. And then what you do is again, you'll add a parentheses here, and then we're gonna just do the start and the end curly brackets, and this is the code block for our for each loop. Now, this is a bit different, and we showed the for each loop in a previous video. Um, but basically we're gonna say for each string, and I'll just say uh, profile value in profiles list, that's the condition. So what it's doing is you don't have to worry about this whole counter stuff or any of this indexing or any of that mess like we did on the for loop. It's pretty much just a very simplified way of saying, look man, I could have 10 things in the profiles list or I could have 30 or 5,000 and all I'm doing here in the code is saying, I want you to keep on iterating through every one of those values until you get to the end of the list and then you're done with the for each loop. So very simplified syntax. And essentially now I have that profile value uh, declared for each string. So let's say that we wanna do this result string very similar to what we were doing before. And instead of all this I index stuff and all that, we just copy this code and we change it. So instead of profiles I, where we're just gonna basically take this profile value for the current profile that we're reading in the list and the for each loop. So we'll just say profile value. So when you pause this and you compare the code, um, again, if you're trying to iterate through every object, you don't need specific index numbers and you're not trying to do uh, odds and evens and things like that. The for each loop is really the easiest way to go. It's very simple syntax wise. Um, you're just iterating through each of the values in a collection and then you um, do something with that data. Now let's go ahead and run this code and take a look at what we get. So if we say for each, we essentially get the same thing as the for loop, um, just much simpler syntax and a lot less code. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go through the last iterator or loop type, which is while loops. If we double click on this while button, it's gonna create a block of code for us. And we're gonna start with the syntax of while, and then we will have parentheses, which is where we're gonna put the uh, conditional statement, like an if else statement essentially in here. And so the difference between while loops and say for each or for loops 
is that while loops are really about a true false uh, statement. So as long as whatever's in this conditional statement here is returning true, then it's going to continue to iterate through the while loop. Whereas for loops are essentially going through a specific index number of, of objects or uh, for each loops is going through the entire collection or entire list of objects um, and basically getting some value out of that. Now let's take a look at this same implementation because I just want you to see um, three different loop types but on the same profiles list. I'm gonna basically create a, a string results equals empty string. And then after the while loop is done, I'm going to set the text uh, while loop dot text field on the UI to equal the results string. And then what I'm going to do is underneath results before the while loop actually goes through, I'm going to create int i equals zero. So this is like a counter number. And I'm intentionally putting i here because I want you to study the code on the for loop and the while loop and see how uh, for this same uh, iteration of the profiles list, I'm essentially doing the same end result, but just in a different way or a different syntax. So I, we're going to start with the uh, I or counter number equaling zero, which is the first index or first item in the profiles list. Then I'm going to go ahead and say int uh, total counter. And this is going to equal profiles.count. So there's a, a property here on the profiles uh, list that allows me to get the total count of strings of profiles that are in that list. Now up here at the top, we can see that we added three profiles, so I should get a total count of three. Now time for the while statement. So while the counter i is less than the total counter of objects, I want to continue to go through this loop, okay? Now, I'm going to do very similar to what I did up here with the for loop and the for each loop, where I just continued to append or add the additional uh, string value for each profile to this result string. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to say results plus equals string dot format. We'll do the quotes, space bar, so that there's a space delimiter between each profile that we append to the result string. And then we're just going to say comma. And here's where things uh, look very similar to the for loop. We're going to say profiles. I'm going to put square brackets and I'm going to pass the index number or the counter number in there. So that's going to be I. And essentially, I'm just going to be adding that uh, current profile index number to um, or the value at that index and appending that to the result string. Honestly, this string here is almost identical to the string that you see here in the for loop. Okay. The only additional thing that we need to do here is that as each while loop goes through, I need to do what? I need to increase the counter. So I have to say I++, which will increase the I value by one each time it goes through the while loop. Honestly, you could pause the video right here. You could look at this code and you could say, isn't this exactly the same thing as what this uh, for loop is doing? I'm setting a counter, starting it at zero. As long as the counter is less than the profile's count, and then each loop in the, uh, iteration that happens, I'm incrementing that by one, that counter by one. This is essentially the same thing. While this I is less than the total counter, and I'm increasing that total counter each time I go through the loop, I'm just gonna continue to append uh, the profile string based on that counter to this result string and then set that in the, uh, the UI or the user interface. So again, you'll see that this is three different ways of doing it and looping through the profiles list to create the same result. Let's go ahead and run this code. When I press for loop, for each loop and the while loop, I get exactly the same result in string. So it just shows you three different implementations of using loops to get uh, through a list of objects and get the results that you're looking for.